here's a question. If you disagree with the moral basis of a law, would you still obey it? What makes a law, law? What gives a law validity? <coughs> Why are laws so highly regarded in society? So on one hand, we know that laws are intended to shape behavior. They're intended to shape relations between societal members. We know that law is also a means of regulating relations and imposing particular behaviors. So one important characteristic about the law is that laws are preferred practices, preferred practices that are articulated as rules designed to influence behavior. So laws are rules of behavior that are encouraged through coercive force or the threat thereof. Well, let's consider the purpose of a law. When we're referring to laws that prohibit people from killing or drinking and driving, the impetus, the motivation, is to protect society. So the first is about protecting society, and the second is about imposing a particular morality. According to John Stuart Mill, law should only regulate the behavior of citizens insofar as that behavior directly harms others. Mill is trying to protect our personal freedoms, our personal liberties, by saying that the baseline is that a person is free, and free to do whatever they please, so long as that behavior does not harm others. So we have to think that harm can mean different things. What form of harm? Is it physical harm? Is it financial harm? Is it emotional harm? <coughs> now this points to some of the weaknesses in Mill's theory. Private behaviors sometimes affect others. So if I choose not to wear a seatbelt and get into an accident and end up in the hospital, this is going to have an impact on healthcare costs. Ergo, this is going to have an impact on our tax, our collective tax burden. The second weakness in Mill's theory is that he does not explain why preventing harm to others should be the only permissible basis for regulating behavior. How about harm to the self? What about harm to society? And Stephen and Devlin both disagree with Mill. So what Devlin says is that the government has a right to protect the moral fabric of society. So what Devlin is saying is that laws that prohibit immoral behavior are valid. And what Stephen says is the government can regulate any behavior that the state deems immoral. Who defines what's moral and what is not? And second, does morality always stay the same? These are all very highly subjective topics that vary <coughs> from person to person. So when you allow the government to regulate morality, what you are doing is allowing a select few people to impose their morality on others. Natural law theory puts forward an answer to that question, what gives a law validity? Now, natural law theorists determine the validity of a law by reference to a moral authority that exists beyond the law itself. Now, the most important element for natural law theorists is that law is not regarded as separate from morality but rather, law is subordinate to that morality. So natural law theorists say that yes, it may be difficult to determine what our fundamental moral principles are. However, 
there are sources that can be drawn upon via which we can formulate certain rules, certain regulations that are going to guide our behavior, our collective behavior. So this moral authority usually comes from three sources. One is a religious source that we look at what are referred to as holy books. And these holy books contain a certain code. These religious codes contain a particular morality. Another source is what we refer to as an intellectual origin. It's based on ration. Use an example, human rights. So there's nothing out there that says that all people are equal. We merely reach the point, we ration, we reason, that all of us, because of our shared humanity, are owed the same rights. It's a rational position that we've adopted. The third one is what we refer to as natural origin. There are certain laws in nature. So to natural law theorists, if a law conflicts with morality, morality wins, and that law should be disobeyed. Now whether or not a moral code will be successful will depend on how many people ascribe to that moral code. And when we look at all the flows, human flows that are happening today, migration, travel, tourism, is it possible to find a homogeneous group? And if not, then how do we determine which particular morality is going to be imposed on everyone? So from a natural law perspective, going back to some of our earlier questions, what is law? Law is a behavioral code that is sourced in a particular morality. Should laws be obeyed? They should if the law aligns with that particular morality. This is actually one of the most exciting parts of the course. <laughs> and it's exciting because it goes to the heart of what this course is about, which is what is law? Law and society, as we've said, law and society. So from a law perspective, what is law? What gives a law validity? Why do people obey the law? Why? Why does law carry that force? <coughs> 